All right, welcome to week one, video one of Introduction to Programming in R. I'm Mavonwi, and this is going to be a short first video. We're just going to cover installing R, accessing and running R sessions from your computer, and then we'll do an orientation to R Studio um, at the end. All right, so first, where to install R. Um, you can find the distributed binaries of the latest versions of R at uh, the Comprehensive R Archive Network. And so these links on the very home page is where you would download um, the pre-compiled binary for your particular system. Um, if these aren't working well for you, you can also head over to Mirrors and um, try to find one that's a little closer to you. Um, click on that link and then you'll see the same links, uh, but you might get better results depending on where you are in the world. So once you've downloaded uh, your binary, uh, you should be able to just run the installer like you would any other application that should walk you through it. I have already downloaded R4.0, um, so I'm not going to go through it here just because I don't want to lose all of my installed packages. Um, but if you have any issues or trouble, uh, let me know and I'll help you out. All right, so once uh, the base R distribution is downloaded, it should be available on your system. Click on the icon, and that's going to bring up this R GUI, so a graphical user interface. This is the one that comes distributed with R, um, and the thing that pops up first is called the R console, and you'll see some startup messages here, just saying a little bit about what version you have um, and what R is, um, and some starting helper functions here. So we're, we should see this message um, a few times in this video, um, and it just indicates that you've started an interactive R session. So you can type things in the console here, and it may or may not understand them. And I'm just hitting enter to run the code, um, and you're seeing it spit out the output on those lines that start with the bracket one. Um, all right, so we're not going to do much here. I just wanted to show you what an interactive R session looks like. Um, and this is what the kind of minimalist um, interface to R looks like. Um, you can open new scripts uh, so that you can save them on your computer so you can edit them later. Um, and uh, this is just one way to interact with R on your computer. We'll be using R Studio to interface with R mostly because it's what I use and so it's what I'm comfortable teaching, um, but you could certainly use the R GUI as well. Another way to access R um, is through the terminal or the command line. And we're not gonna be doing command line programming in this course, I just wanna show you this because I feel like um, sometimes with beginners who work only with R Studio, they start to uh, think that R Studio is R. Um, but it's not, it's just an interface to R. R is a program that runs on your computer, um, and just like any program, you can interact with it in a bunch of different ways, and one of the um, more low-level ways to interact with R is uh, through the command line. So on a Mac, um, you can do that through the terminal. Um, on Windows, it would be through the shell. Um, you might have to install Bash if you don't already have it installed, um, or there's other ones as well. So once we're in the command line, to start or initialize an R session, we just hit R, and now we see that welcome message just like we had before, and suddenly this just becomes a regular R console. So same code. Um, so there's nothing uh, particularly unique about what R Studio is doing uh, to run an R session. It's just that R Studio has a lot of really great features that we like to use when we're running interactive programming sessions. So I just wanted to um, introduce you to this early so that uh, it's it's not such a mystery if you encounter it online or, or, or later when you're looking for help with R. All right, so we'll close out of this. And actually, I'll quit the session first so that it doesn't yell at me when I close. All right, okay, so now we're gonna get to R Studio. You can search for the RStudio download page. It'll take you to this page where all of the installers are available for your particular system. I've already run or downloaded and run the RStudio installer. 
And so now we're just going to open it up. And I'm actually going to open it up again because I'm not sure why my particular installation isn't showing the welcome message. It's funny, um, I've been pausing and, and hitting record on the video again and it, I'm almost thinking that it doesn't show the welcome message when I'm recording, <laughs> which would be interesting. Um, I'm not sure what's up with that particular bug, it's very strange, um, but I just opened R while the recording application was closed, and now we get the welcome message. All right, anyway, here it is, um, and we're just going to go over uh, the RStudio IDE and the different panes in it. So these windows are called panes. I'm hoping this is uh, what you're seeing as well when you open our studio for the first time with the console over here. So just what we've seen before. Again, exact same thing. Um, and then this pane over here on the right is the environment pane. Um, it's going to list all the objects in your environment. Right now it's empty because we haven't saved anything. Um, and then down here is the file pane. You can navigate to different things on your computer, just like the Finder on your Mac or the Explorer on Windows. Um, and then there's a few tabs here that we'll be using as we uh, go through the course. But I want to keep it simple for right now um, and just say uh, that I will not be using a ton of the buttons in our studio. Um, I do use a few of them very regularly, like creating a new file here. So creating a new script is going to open this what's called the source pane. Um, and this is where we can save our code uh, so that we can find it on our computer and edit it later. Um, and just like in the R GUI when you open a script, now if you type code and hit enter, it just goes to the next line to actually run the code you have to hit Command Enter on a Mac or Control Enter on Windows. And then you can see when I hit that, um, this ran down here. So if I run a longer line of code and hit Command Enter, we get the output down here. All right, um, so that's the source pane. And uh, the reason that I'm not gonna be using a lot of the buttons other than this one and maybe a few others is um, mostly because I, I I've never used a lot of them, so I honestly don't know what a lot of them do. Um, you could probably guess, but uh, for the most part, I would like to show you the code that um, corresponds to the mapping on these buttons. So most of these are just shortcut buttons for a line of code um, that is pretty easy to learn and um, will probably speed up your workflow a bit. And then also, if you ever have to run an R session in not our studio, um, you will know how to do the same things um, with code. And so hopefully that'll give you a little bit more flexibility in the future. Um, but I do want to show you how to rearrange the panes on your window, mostly because this is this default setting is not how I typically code. And since I'll be teaching from um, my setup, I just want to show you how that came to be so that it's not confusing the next time you see my RStudio environment. So you go up to Tools and Global Options, and down here to Pane Layout, and I'm just gonna switch this console to Environment, um, and that moves the Environment pane down to the lower left and the console to the upper right. Um, and apply it, hit OK. And uh, the reason I like doing this is because I often like seeing my script as a full page and then I like seeing the console as a full page as well so that the things that I run over here um, and then I can uh, easily show up on the other side and it's, it's just a more pleasant view for me so that's why I arrange my my uh, setup like this you do not have to do this if you like the console where it was feel free to do that but I just wanted to show you how you can change one of those options if you want and we'll be customizing some other things as we go as well. 
All right, so that's it for the first video. Um, like I said, it was a short one, uh, and we're gonna get into um, file navigation in the next video. So I will see you then.